It's Monday, so it's time for me to try and get Doc to quit comic books again. This week, we've gone to some oldies but goodies. We're going back to the Brian Michael Bendis train and the Jason Aaron train. I do want to say, if you appreciate us taking all these bullets for you guys and reading these terrible comic books so you don't have to, definitely give us a thumbs up. Now, Doc, you are the Marvel aficionado. You are the X-Men historian. You used to be a Bendis fan, but not anymore. I, I used to be a Bendis fan. I liked his earlier stuff. Uh, somewhere around AVX is when he lost the fucking plot and has just gone completely off the wagon since then. Off the wagon? He's drinking again? My goodness. So we've got Justice League 74, the very final issue of Brian Michael Bendis on the Justice League title. Obviously, they're going to kill off the Justice League. The next issue, which is probably necessary after all the damage that Brian Michael Bendis has done to the title, Probably best to just kill it and bring it back with something new. Justice League 74 is an absolute train wreck. I would talk about the artist. I don't even want to mention him by name. The art in this comic book, Doc, is just is so terrible. It's just blue, black, and red and a bunch of fucking silhouettes. I don't even know who the characters are that are doing whatever is supposed to be happening. You hardly can tell what they're even doing. This art was just, it looks like the biggest rush job in comic book history. I, I thought the same thing. I was reading through this. I'm like, this is indecipherable. I can't tell what I'm looking at. Todd McFarlane famously said, when in doubt, black it out, meaning about adding blacks and uh, adding extra shading to a lot of work. Was this fucking comic produced by David Goyer? Because that's what it felt like. It was you know, in the rain at night with no lights on and everyone wearing all black. I had no fucking clue what I was looking at. And because it's a Brian Michael Bendis comic, none of the characters have unique voices that actually would correspond to them. So when the, even when they're talking, you're like, I don't, I'm at a loss here. Everyone speaks the same. Everyone's speaking in Whedon speak or Bendis speak, and they're all so uh, quippy and everything, and they're very sassy to each other. So I have no idea what's going on, partly because of the artist, partly because of Bendis' very terrible dialogue. But the most off-putting part about this entire comic book, Doc, I don't, well, maybe we'll be in agreement we haven't talked about this be, beforehand, is Brian Michaels Bettis' insistence that Naomi is the greatest fucking superhero in the world. Uh, this has been his modus operandi since he created Miles. Miles was the best Spider-Man. Then Riri was going to be the best Iron Man. And now Naomi is the best fucking superhero she's already starting to suffer from Carol Danversitis where, where they just keep giving her more powers to offset the fact that nobody gives a fuck about Naomi. There's actually some, some um, commentary in here from Constantine. He's talking about, you know, chaos and order and there must be balance. And with a lot of heroes, you do have to have checks and balances. You say Superman's overpowered, but Superman has a weakness. You know, it's magic. You could also kind of use his family against him or whatever. But Naomi literally has no weakness now. Now she's she can manipulate magic and stuff. She's more powerful than everybody in the universe. It's so off-putting, and it feels like the only reason this comic book was produced was so Brian Michael Bendis can tell you and I and the readers to tell us that Naomi is greater than all the heroes that we've been reading for 80 years. I, I, I obviously only read the issues that you and I, well, that you forced me to for this fucking segment, but... In that, they establish this threat, Xanadoth, as some ultra-chaotic being that was so powerful that all the other elder existential creatures of the DCU banished it before time itself existed. And it comes back, and then, of course, it's going to be Naomi to banish it again, to, to be the one to go one-on-one -on -one with the Great One. And they even met, go out of their way to say Superman has all these powers, the same ones that you do. And he's susceptible to magic, but you are a conduit for it. What, what the fuck? I guess Bendis really fell in love with uh, the way that DC characters use magic. So there's a lot of fucking backwards writing in this issue. Far too much for my taste. Now, look, my question for, for, for Bendis, though, is if that's the way that, that DC, that all of DC uses magic, then is bizarro a magician i don't believe he is well he should be because he speaks backwards well it could be a character trait he might not be trying to use magic <laughs> you can't just speak backwards and have magic you have to be a magic user and that's one of the ways that you apply the spell 
That doesn't seem to make any sense. But okay. Well, just because you have a wizard's wand doesn't make you a wizard, Doc. You have to have the appropriate teachings. I, I couldn't tell what was going on for two thirds of this. The logic, the internal logic, it just kept kind of jumping around. Um, was he wearing Dr. Fate's helmet and then Dr. Fate got his helmet back and then Zan me. I honestly don't know what happened. I, I, I other yeah, than exactly. Naomi is really, really powerful. Yeah. Other than Naomi's the bestest thing ever. And the thing is, they they finish this up. They, they're leading into this death of the Justice League. This is the perfect time to, with this all-powerful entity that is so wonderfully powerful, to kill the Justice League. And, and, and it Yeah, why not have up. Turner Evil have the, the great darkness take her over and she's the bad guy? That would be... That'd be a heel turn no one saw coming, and I think people would enjoy it. This should have been the issue where, or, or there should have been one more issue where they think they're winning, and then they die in the next issue. That's that's where well, it last page should have been her turning on him, and then being like, "What, not Naomi?" And then the next issue could be like sixteen pages of fighting before she kills them all. Yeah, and sixteen pages of fighting and six pages of slaughter. But instead, we get this fucking campy super friends bullshit with the new super awesome has every power diverse character batman has to fucking validate her no of course everyone does that's just yeah. the way it goes my my one hope out of all of this doc brian michael bennis is he's done his superman run he's done his action comics run now he's done his justice league run he still has to fi finish justice league versus legion of superheroes oh yeah he did his legion of superheroes run once that's over he might just be done with dc and he can go back to marvel that's a There's point. a comic book that I actually is this worse, Doc? Is Avengers 54 from Jason Aaron worse than that Justice League issue? I have to say no. Now it is equally nonsensical and LOL so random, but it had significantly better art because I could actually tell what the fuck was going on. But it had nine million terrible comic tropes riddled throughout the comic book you had a villain that was now a teenager again and you had a, a young hero that it was aged up to be a, an older hero at that point you had a, a hero fighting a villain version of themselves there's so many terrible writing tropes stuff into this one comic book i don't know how how jason aaron pulled it off yeah this is the definition of comic tropes oh and then uh the uh hero wearing just a different colored version of his existing costume for no apparent reason that's supposed to be super cool and we had the, the retcon Panther. of thor's mother and she was in there so you got a, oh, a yeah a historical retcon of parentage yeah you got that um oh you have replacement version of kind of classic character in fake phoenix echo being in there that has no business being being the phoenix you also have namor apologizing profusely and begging for forgiveness so you have a a, a proud anti-hero slash villain that would never do such a thing in the world but you know under the guise of oh my goodness it's black panther i better apologize i'm quaking in my boots it's not like atlantis has ever been or had the balls to fight wakanda before oh we had snarky animal yes in mephisto dog Time travel, <laughs> multiversal travel. Yeah. 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 You, you're actually, you know what? This was, this is how to hit every single comic trope in one issue. So that, that was kind of a bit of an accomplishment, but I was shocked he fit it all in there, but he did. Well, he, he did it at the expense of story, Doc, because there is, essentially is no story. I guess there's a conflict brewing between Phoenix powered Echo and, and Thor, and they don't like each other as Thor's fighting himself. And she's like, but Thor, you got to join. You got to, we got to fight together. We're friends. We can only defeat this together. As he's actually fighting the whole time. And at the end, guess what? Yeah. He realized the, po the power we, of friendship wins. We need to, we need to, we need to team up, Echo. You were right the whole time while I was being defeated. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, know, I actually did some shit for this issue. You just kind of fucking stood around. But yeah, sure. This story was bad. Um, the o I think the only character that did not get actively shit on and wasted in this comic was Doom. So I will give him that. He didn't. I mean, except for watching Doom eat an eyeball, which was kind that of was weird. strange. Uh, that was that was very strange. Was was Ghost Rider running around because they made a big deal about how the fact that Ghost Rider suddenly not there anymore? I didn't uh, notice. 
I, I don't know what is going on with the Deathlocks. Um, I think one of the Deathlocks is Avengers Mountain now. It is, yes. It, it the the series the seat or the issue ends with dead or thought to be brain dead Deathlock that apparently has uploaded himself into the dead celestial and is now going to. So now they're going to have a celestial on the team. Because yeah, but the Eternals the are coming inside. to fight him for the Celestial. Yeah, well, now it's a Deathlock, so th- nothing makes sense. It's a no, Jason nothing. Aaron comic. This is, this is, uh, this is oh so random fun from Marvel yeah. Comics and Jason Aaron. I um, I just like this one actually more. I just I thought the the story was even worse. And I kind of uh, after reading Avengers, I kind of appreciated the fact that in Justice League, I wasn't sure what was happening because after reading Avengers, knowing what was happening actually made it worse. I prefer Avengers this week because a I could tell what the the art didn't make my eyes hurt. It didn't end. The issue did not end with a Super Friends barbecue, but both of them did have triumph via the power of friendship. I, I'm going with Avengers as the better comic this week. Better. That's a bold statement. I will. Oh, it's still, it's it's the least stinky pile of shit. It, yes, it, it is the least stinky pot piece of shit on the, the turd pile. They're both pretty bad. I think Jason Aaron uh, really lets his tail feathers out with this one and lets everyone know that Punisher number one was probably a fluke or of some type where he shouldn't be writing team co- comic books at all. He should just be doing kind of uh, more grounded, physically violent kind of characters like a Punisher or Code because he certainly seems to do a lot better on those types of characters. He cannot handle a team book. He's basically just throwing everything at the Avengers wall and hoping that something would stick. And I don't think it's happened at this point. But Justice League is awful, but at least but at least Brian Michael Bendis is gone. So there is a silver lining for Justice League. There is no silver lining for Avengers. Yeah, because you're still going to have Jason Aaron next week. If they if they killed off the Avengers next week, I would have given a, a round of applause. Be like, way to, way to follow DC's lead on that one because they made the right choice. It's time to just end it. It was time to end it. 50 issues ago if you're a fan of the avengers and steve rogers captain america i hate to break it to you but things are likely to get much worse before they get better in fact new writers on captain america sentinel of liberty colin kelly and jackson lanzig discuss their upcoming steve rogers comic book and you're not going to believe what the details that they had to say about this thing this look this sounds far worse than i could have ever imagined you got to hear this <laughs> 